All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. It is Wednesday. It is 4 p.m. Pacific. Heck, let's do some Starfinder Wednesday. Today, we're talking about it. We're talking about a planet that has been much requested uh, in the boards. It's been mentioned on Twitter. It's been mentioned. Uh, we've been getting requests for it left and right. And finally, today is the day we're doing this. We have Chris Sims in the studio today. Hello. We're talking about Avalon. Avalon. Yeah. Welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Yes. Uh, so, first off, uh, let's talk about so uh, an overview of the planet. Avalon is the closest planet to the sun. It's basically a Mercury analog. It's a small planet. It's about the, a third the size of Galarian, mm -hmm. uh, mostly silicate and metal. Um, and it would be pretty barren if it didn't have artificial life on it. And that seems to be the bulk of what is crawling around Avalon. Yeah, is artificial intelligence, right? Uh, artificial life. Yep. We're going to get to that. I got some awesome images for everybody to see. Yep. Uh, and so it's the closest planet to the sun. Right. Uh, in the daytime, it's got to be hot. Burning super, hot. super hot. Super okay. hot. Hot enough to melt melt lead. That's pretty hot. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, does it is. Does it do the thing where in the nighttime it's like super cold or does it stay pretty it's warm? It's because of the way the planet is, it's actually, it doesn't conduct heat very well. Okay. So it's, it could be cold in the shadows during the daytime. Okay. So. Like, are we talking like frost and yeah. snow and stuff? Yeah, it could be oh. frosty and in some of the shadows. Okay. So. Uh, so let's do this. So uh, first of all. Uh, how is Avalon laid out? Is it cities all around the whole thing or are there uh, the, sections where it's populated or how does that work? The anasites that live there, the robots that are the population there see certain parts of the planet as holy mm -hmm. um, because they believe they were created by other beings they call the first ones and the first ones built cities on Avalon too and the anasites don't like to go into those cities. They don't go into those cities. So, and they build around them. So the megaplexes that the, the Anasites have built, the giant cities, continent-sized cities on Avalon, are kind of built around these ancient sites. Okay, and these dot the entire planet? Yeah, well, there, there are several of them, yeah. Okay. And they're all over the planet. So the first ones came to Avalon to harvest something, and they built these artificial beings to help them do that. And then when they left, wherever they went, they just left these beings behind uh, to their own devices. And that that's where we get the anasites from? Yep. So do the anasites uh, have memory of, of the first ones? Are they able to tell the story and all that kind of thing? They don't seem to. Interesting. So, and they, uh, and they have evolved since then. So, you know, Initially, they were laborers for the first ones, and they were specific types of robots. But over the centuries and since the first ones left, they have basically evolved to fill all sorts of roles um, from basically what amount to robotic animals Okay. that are non-sapient, like literally non-sapient. They aren't artificially intelligent. They're, they are feral creatures. All the way up to you know, uh, giant robots that rule cities. Okay, like that, so. so we're going to get into some of these specifically in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, so I've got a map here. Yeah, and let's go over the map. The, this is basically uh, the an overview of, of this of some of the cities. Well, it's a it's this is the entire surface of the planet. Oh, this so. is actually opened up as, as if it were. Yeah. It, it's not a sphere anymore. It's been laid flat. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So it's not to scale or anything, but you can see that the cities like Auto Automatrix and Striving and Endeavor and Perceptum Thirteen, okay, are uh, cover m a lot of the planet, and they're built around these ancient sites, and they aren't, and they're also built uh, basically according to what the Anasites want them to be. Okay, so Automatrix is one of the oldest sites for the anasites that's one of the first places they built and it's a gigantic manufacturing center and it's where a lot of them are made uh, and striving is the birthplace of a god of which god of one of triune's aspects epoch epoch yeah nice. um so let's talk about so uh one of the questions i got on the message boards 
um, speaking specifically about striving is how big is how big is striving? Like, uh, is there a sense of scale that we can get from that map? Well, I think that it's fair to say that striving probably covers about, I would say, a tenth of the planet, maybe a little more than that. So it's pretty big. I mean, f- a planet a third the size of Earth. Right. So okay, okay. Um, I don't know exactly how big that is, but it's <laughs> it's pretty sprawling. It's big. Like, it's it's big. huge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, let's let's talk about the the what what else do we know about the old ones? Like what? Uh, as, I'm, I'm sure that there's stories and like uh, yeah. you know uh, generation to generation handed down, like a uh, um, you know a, a verbal history and all that kind of stuff. We don't know very much about the first ones. Uh, one of the things that's said about them is that they had servos in their limbs, so. Okay. Um, and whether that's true or not remains to be seen. Yeah. We, ha- we haven't seen any first ones. We only have evidence of them. And uh, they valued, apparently valued star metals like adamantine and uh, mithril and stuff like that a lot. They, they valued that. And that's one of the reasons why they were on Avalon. Um, and the Anasites are actually divided into factions over their theories about the first ones. So okay. there's a faction called Those Who Wait, and they believe that the first ones are going to return to Avalon and that <laughs> they have to make Avalon ready for that divine return. Really? Okay. And then in, inside of there, there are, uh, I happen to know that they're the they're ones that are waiting for them to return. Mm-hmm. And there's another faction that believe those who become and right. they want to basically spread their the anasite life everywhere so they send out starships to explore and to colonize other worlds really so they're they're on like a a, a, a mission uh, to bring mm-hmm. other folks into the fold right they believe that Ab- that they were left on Avalon on purpose to spread into the galaxy that they believe that that was the first one's intent for them. <laughs> really? The, the only reason they, they could possibly have been abandoned is that they need to spread across the galaxy. Okay, so uh, what? So the ones that are waiting for them to return, mm-hmm. that faction, what do they? Be, why do they believe they left? Do they have a belief system? You know, the them? Anasites don't seem to know why the first ones left, other than it seems like they came to Avalon for a purpose, and when that purpose was done, they left. <laughs> they, like they okay. came there to harvest something, uh-huh. and when they were done with that, they abandoned everything. They left everything behind. Interesting. Okay, and because they don't go into these uh, cities, right? They actually hire adventurers to go into the cities for them. Really? Because mm-hmm. they're like that. Nope, not going in there. Yeah, it's it's a, it's kind of a, a pseudo religious taboo for them to, so they stay out of out of those cities. But they're is a third faction of Anasites that has evolved over time and it's really non-factioned Anasites. And they say, who cares about the first ones? They, they're just... They're like, no we're here on Avalon, <laughs> right. doing our own thing. <laughs> They've been gone for millennia. Who cares about them? Yeah, it's old news. Yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got our lives to lead. Right. I mean, there's a point to that. A yeah. Bit, I yeah. Think. Um, so let's talk about... Uh, so first of all, let, so let's get into this. So I've got this awesome cityscape here yep. that you brought. Um, which which city are we looking at right now? Uh, I would say that that's probably striving. Striving. Yeah. Uh, and then roughly how many? Is, so I'm seeing that there are something like 152 million residents in striving. Yep. Is that is that pretty close? That's exactly right. Okay. <laughs> so so this is a big city. Then it's a huge that city. That yeah. many people. Yeah. These. These are giant population centers uh, that have a lot of air. Right, and them. the megaplexes also have undercities where, okay. they, like, if it's built across a crater, they they will incorporate the crater into the city. So the city stays flat, but they build down into the crater. Underneath. Oh, so, I gotcha. Okay, so. so on top, it's like an iceberg. Like you yeah. see this much, yeah. but really, it's just a, a hive down there. Right. Okay, I gotcha. Um, so yeah, uh, in fact, uh, the real POTUS is saying they they hire adventurers to go into the old cities. And, and he's right. That is perfect for a Starfighter game. Like, you right. know, it's like you've been hired by these Anasites to go in there. And, and you know, that I I kind of feel like uh, it's <laughs> it's like the packed world is full of hooks. 
And that's so true. You know, that I think that's kind of the plan. It's almost as if it was on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think so. Um, okay, so we've talked about these anisons. Right. Let's start seeing some of these things. Okay. Um, they're they're diverse. They're not they're not one they're, uniform type of creature. No, and they're they vary in size from a tiny, tiny, like smaller than a mouse robot to gigantic. Really? Okay. So. Let's see. We've got. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, that's a. Well, ship. That, that's a cedar ship, yeah. So the cedar ships are the one. The those who become send out these ships to colonize other worlds. Oh, okay. And most of them have no atmosphere and no creature comforts. You know, so they they're like, we don't need comfort. We're we'll just fly with whatever we need to build our colony, and go from there. I like this. I like this. Uh, also, really quick, the real POTUS. Thank you for gifting that sub, BB. Welcome to the team. Uh, you've got uh, ex you've got even more emotes to play around with now. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, let's see. So this thing. That is a anisite predator drone. An so, anisite predator drone. Now so it looks like a plant, kind of. It looks like a plant to you. It, kind of. It looks like it, it looks like a rhinoceros beetle to me. Oh, it does look like that. I was thinking it looked like a. Um, Kind of like a Venus flytrapy type thing, yeah. but it a, a beetle does work as well. Yeah, but these are robots inside. The whole thing is a robot. The whole thing. Yeah. Um, and and so that's what makes it an anisite. Like all of these things have this robotic right. nature yeah. that runs through all the no matter how they look. Right. Okay. Gotcha. And, and the Predator drone is kind of the elite police of anisite culture. Mm-hmm. And they also take out dangerous non-sapient anisites that are doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Um, so they, f and they fight uh, proxy wars for whoever directs them. You know, so there's a place on Avalon called the Midnight Trenches where there's a lot of valuable material still being mined, and the factions among the anisites are fighting over that material because it's. Getting more and more scarce. Really? And so, predator so got drones a do a lot of yeah, in, do a in, lot of inside the planet itself. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, is it? Are there are there smaller robots inside that robot? Is it robots all the way down? That's, that's a good question. I'm the guessing. answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, let's see. So we've got uh, this thing. It looks like a centipede, kind of with arms. Yeah. This is a laborer anasite and. Okay. The cool thing about labor anisites is that they can totally reconfigure themselves to do whatever job that they need to do. So they can add extra limbs or different modes of movement, you know, whatever they need to do to accomplish the task that they're assigned. Okay, all right. Um, and then, so going along with that, again, these were built by the, the, the old ones. The first ones, the yeah. The first ones. Yeah. Uh, and when they left, they just left these behind. Right. And they had no programming. Did they still kind of take care of the planet and kind of do the jobs that they were functioned to do or built to do? Or did they kind of stop and have to be reactivated when others emerged? They They kept going. They just kept they, right they on kept, going. kept going, but they started to do what they wanted to do instead of... Because they were left with no task. Mm -hmm. So they gave themselves things to do. Okay. Uh, Reynard is saying... Uh, it is definitely a labor robot. Absolutely not here to conquer your planet and kill you all. <laughs> I think that that's a good observation. Um, okay, so moving along to this uh, kind of a, what, a dragonfly? Or? Yeah, this is called a wingbot, and this wingbot. is an example of a type of anisite that is non-sapient. So okay. it, it's, it's basically an animal. And there are anisites on Avalon that, are, that basically fill that role and some of them don't even live in the cities, so. Ah, okay. Um, and, and this anisite is about four feet long, and it has like a built-in laser and stuff like that, and it can be dangerous. Like, it, it could, att if you were wandering around Abalon and one of these things flew by, it could just decide to, I'm just gonna shoot that guy. <laughs> you know, huh? I, I like how the, the progression of description, it's about four feet long, it has a laser. It and has it a can be dangerous, and it can be dangerous. That all stands to reason, right yep. there. I, li I like that. Um, so then, with uh, really quick, because we've mentioned it a couple times, I want to make sure we get into this part. Okay. Uh, we've got the the sentient robotic organism. That's mm -hmm. an SRO. Right. Um, what the playable race? Yeah. It, then that is a playable race. Is right. is that uh, kind of the, the version of a playable anisite, or do we anticipate seeing something that is... If a player of mine wanted to play an anisite, I'd probably use an SRO. Okay. And maybe just give it the shortwave ability that 
uh, anasites have, which is basically they all have built-in radios that they can talk to each other with and talk to uh, technological other technological constructs. Oh, with, right. So. Okay. Yeah. So uh, so as far as, as the rules as written right now, that is the playable anasite that's available. For me, th th yeah. I mean, okay. that's the way I would do it. Okay. It's the Sounds easiest, good. the easiest way to do it. Okay. Because anasites can really be anything. They could be, and SRO is a good example of a, a species that could be really configured to how the player wants it to look. So. Oh, right, right. Okay. Um, let's see. So we've got this fella, and then moving along to, to this thing, uh, which uh, it looks like a, a shrimp. <laughs> or a praying mantis, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, actually an ambassador. And a oh, it looks very welcoming, so I can understand why it would be an ambassador. <laughs> this is the type of uh, anasite that they send out, especially those who become send out to talk to other species. They're capable oh. of learning a language in a couple minutes, for example, and oh, stuff like cool. that. Oh, that's cool. Okay. And they can swap out languages, so they can just ditch the memory of one language to learn another one, and that type of thing. Interesting. And they do have weapons, but they keep those weapons hidden. <laughs> so, you know, so <laughs> right. so they don't offend anybody yeah. right off the bat. I mean, the, the weapons just pop out when you need them. Hidden weapons mm -hmm. can all can. You're right. I, I don't want to offend you, so I'm going to hide my weapons. Uh -huh. Also, it can seem very shady. Well, but, the thing is, the the typical anasite ambassador will tell you that it has a weapon. Oh, so they're not quiet that they have them. They just don't have them at the ready. Right. Okay. All the, right. the robot will say. The anasite will say. I have a weapon in case I need to defend myself. <laughs> right. Please don't be alarmed. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Lori, another labor robot. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think this agenda is starting to take hold, and I see what they're doing, and I don't know if I trust it. I wouldn't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> they're seeding the galaxy with artificial <laughs> life. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, let's see. What and do we have? they don't even need to, to choose planets that have atmospheres, you know? Oh, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah. That which, is scary. Which, but that also means that they don't need to compete with species that do need atmospheres. So, so does that mean that if you are... Now, does not does an SRO need an atmosphere? No. So if you're... And neither does an android. If you're a party of, of these things, your ship doesn't really need to be a full ship. I mean, it doesn't... Like, when you, they're out doing their mission... You don't need a life support whatever, system. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. All right. <laughs> I like that idea. Um, let's see. Yeah, another. Okay, so we've got this last one that I have, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, is kind of a cool looking little. This one looks like a robot like it. Yeah, this is a, actually a specific anasite named Tier 38 Mentor. He's, uh, oh, I, I, I don't know if it's a he, but is a, basically a priest of Tryon. Oh yeah, okay. and uh, but he also believes in a philosophy called singularity. Now, wait, is that the same thing that we have as the singularity, which, which is where uh, the the robot uprising happens, and and kind all of that sort of thing. Kind really? of so. Okay. So, uh, those who believe in singularity believe that uh, eventually technology will unite all species into one mega. Organism basically nice. complete, so a galaxy completely completely united by technology. <laughs> um, so, and they believe that uh, triune that's triune is an example of that because triune is three beings merged into one, mm -hmm. and uh, the expansion of drift travel is another example of moving towards singularity. Okay, all right. So then. Uh, that's interesting. Where would we run into this person? This, uh, what was it? Something 38? Tier 38 Mentor. Tier 38 Mentor. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, Tier 38 Mentor lives in the, unif the Unification Cathedral. Okay. In Striving. In Striving. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Although, uh, could go anywhere he wants to. I mean... Um, yeah, they're not they're not stuck on that planet at all. No. Okay. Reynard Wolf is saying it's like Facebook, but less evil. Yeah. So <laughs> there's that. Uh, this is that's gonna be fun when we start streaming on Facebook if they have an algorithm that realizes we're talking bad about, about Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get the video to upload for some reason. I don't know why. Um, okay. So uh, where? So one of the questions that I got on the message boards, and I think this is kind of interesting mm -hmm. uh, because. The vote that you have at the Pack Worlds 
where it's kind of based on the sentient population, right? Um, is there a time where... Sapient population? I guess that's true. I guess that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Could they just start churning out a lot of anasites and kind of sway the vote in a way that they want it to go? Because they, it seems like they can do that. They could, but the thing is, like, anasites are really into rules. So that's kind of against their mode of living, first of all. And second of all, they, they build themselves to fill certain roles. It's not like they're just churning out anasites left and right for no okay. reason. So a new anasite, an, one anasite will get recycled and another anasite will get made, that type of thing. So could they do that? Yes. Would they? No. Okay. So the answer is no, but because they wouldn't want to, yes. not because they couldn't. Right, and okay. I and I'm sure with their vast machine intelligence that they have realized that they could stack the deck that way. They just don't. Right, right. Okay, all they, right. They do do one thing that the Pact World doesn't like, though. Oh, and that? that is the machine court on Avalon invites anyone who is accused of a crime to be tried on Avalon, and if they find you innocent, then they won't extradite you. Really? Even if another planet says that you're guilty of a crime. So essentially they're like, yeah, you've got your thing going on. We've decided this and this is what we're going to do about it. And right. they kind of stick to their own rules and things right. like that. Interesting. What does that do for their reputation in the, in the pact world? Well, a lot of people don't like that because imagine. they, because some people think that cr- criminals have ex- escaped justice that way. Mm-hmm. But the machine court is an impartial artificial intelligence amalgam. So it's it's pretty fair. It weighs the evidence. Mm, and yeah, right. anybody who stays on Avalon after being found innocent by that court is also just given a job and all the resources they need to live there. So Interesting. Okay. So it's kind of a utopia on I Avalon, was just actually. Say, it, it, I mean, on one hand, it could be very useful, you mm-hmm. know, for certain populations. So if you and I went to Avalon. Done. Uh, when we landed, we would be greeted. Okay. And we would be... If we hadn't filled out our paperwork already, and they didn't already know who we were, <laughs> right. they would ask us to go through this, these tests and stuff like that, and then they would give us a job okay, and send us to where that job is. They would give us a place to live, and they would provide everything we needed plus spending money. Wow. I mean, it's super nice. Yeah. Uh, okay. And I assume that the job would be kind of fine-tuned to what your skill set is yep. and all of that sort of thing. Yep. So why don't they have more people flooding to their planet then. Like, yeah. like here's the thing. I think maybe I'm missing something, but if I were out of work having trouble finding a job or whatever, it would be like, we have to go to Abalon. Like, Abalon's going to take care of us. And yeah, but, you know, even in with travel the way it is in our world, most people stay close to their homes. They're, they they live and die within a 50-mile radius, you know? Right, right. So Plus, I, I would assume that for the average person... Starflight is not super cheap, you know. But I, I'm, okay. I'm sure that a lot of that. a lot of people do go to Avalon. But another thing is, living on Avalon is a little bit, I would say, austere. Right. Because you know it's kind of this bleak landscape with this machine-built cities, and and it does have atmosphere uh, in places because the anasites have manufactured atmosphere. So people like you and me could live there. Oh, yeah, which but, is nice. Mm-hmm. They don't need it, but they do it for yep. the off-worlders mm-hmm. benefit. Yep. Okay. Um, let me ask you this, uh, and then we're probably going to wrap up and start some Q&A after this. Really? We're already done? Yeah, we're just about there. we got about four minutes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, time flies when you're having a good time. Um, how do they... And I, so the, I, the, I could see there being some different facets to this, but let's just try. Uh, how do the anasites treat androids or SROs or non-sapient technological constructs? Um, so because anasites are robots, right? Or robots, as BB put in the in the uh, chat. Robots. Uh, robots. <laughs> uh, how do they treat androids and, and other like I guess off-world machinery? Uh, they treat them as basically kin. Really. So uh, artificial life is treated very well on Avalon. And uh, when the androids gained their freedom, because they used pre-gap, they were enslaved. Okay. Um, a lot of them moved to Avalon, and they were welcome there. 
Interesting. It's like oh, a welcome with open arms is like co- like yeah. compatriots or whatever that yeah. word is. Okay, interesting. I like that. What about um, uh, vice versa? Like, I, I guess if they all went there, they felt like they could be comfortable there. Right. Um, is that kind of across the packed worlds? Like, it's like androids are like, oh yeah, no, they're they're cool people or um, cool beings. Or I th- I think whatever. that I think that a lot of the species in the packed worlds actually think pretty highly of anasites. Okay. Uh, okay. Because of the society that they've built, which is could be could be called a utopia. I mean, Absolutely. and and the fact that they produce outstanding gear, and uh, they manufacture starships and uh, have great solar technology and energy technology. So a lot of good things come from Avalon. So yeah, it sounds like it. It sounds like a cool place, actually. Yeah. At first, I was very very distrustful. <laughs> uh, because they look intimidating, they look scary. Yeah, they 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 have like arthropodal shapes. Most of them are like crab-like or yeah. spider-like or insect-like in shape. So, yeah. Or they have some aspect that lends itself to you thinking, "Oh, that's a bug," you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. right, which is not generally very welcoming. I I, I think. Well, so. I mean, if for 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 humans, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. So I guess it's uh, it's it's the typical don't judge a book by its cover. Like they're yeah. not as as shreddy on on people as they look like they would be, and probably could be. I would imagine that they could probably tear through some limbs very easily. Yeah, if they wanted to. I think that they're quite capable of defending themselves. It's just that they're not mean spirited or anything like that. So yeah, I'm, yeah. So. Um, don't judge a <laughs> don't judge a meat bag by its squishiness. <laughs> that is a lesson to know. Always. Uh, thank you for that. Um, okay. Uh, now, the last thing before we wrap up here: if you were running a homebrew mm-hmm. and you were using Avalon, mm-hmm. what is some? What are what are a couple of the things that you're like? Well, if, if the PCs are here, we have to do this. We have to do this, and we have to do this. Like, what are some of the high points of things that you think are so interesting that it's like that's making its way into my game? Well, one of the things that I would do is have them greeted and offered a job, <laughs> yeah, which is like. <laughs> But then I would have them uh, probably approached by various people who understood what they could do. Mm-hmm. And by people, I mean anasites. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, right. And given various tasks that are adventure-related, especially exploring the first one sites. But uh, Avalon also has uh, unique features called ice wells. Okay. It's, it's uh, deep impact craters that actually have biological life in them. So oh. those places are cool places to explore too. Oh, absolutely! What kind of life are we? Are we talking like potentially scary life or potentially scary life? But uh, like sharp wings. Sharp wings are from Avalon. They're these uh, basically predatory avian species that are covered with uh, vision sensors. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> um, and there are these mole-like creatures that live in the ice wells uh, and dig tunnels through. Avalon's deep reaches, um, and uh, there are plants in there that produce electricity and oh, produce cool. atmosphere. Oh, and so light? Do they light up? And some of them do. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool! I love that stuff. That 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 stuff is fun to explore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, especially if you don't know all the ins and outs about it, you yeah. end up running through an electrified forest, you know, and things like. And that. you mentioned xenodruids, I think, before the stream started. But yeah, before. And, yeah. and there's actually one of the ice wells is. Inhabited by xenodruids. No so. way. <laughs> yeah. just, that's like the ice well of xenodruids. Yeah. I like that. So that would be fun to explore. Yeah. I, could, I could see how that could be a lot of fun and kind of exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you mix it to what we were talking about earlier in chat, which was, you know, the whole we need you to go explore this old this old ruin that we're not going to. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, I, I could see that being a lot of fun. Um, all right. Let's. Uh, I'm going to do the wrap up, and then we'll get to some Q and A. Okay. All right. Cool. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you learned a lot. I know that I did. If you did, feel free to give a like and uh, put in the comments your favorite thing about Avalon. I'll make sure the best ones go to Chris, and we're going to laugh and high five over the best comments that you put <laughs> down there. And in the meantime, for Paizo and for Chris and for me, I'm your old buddy Dan. Thank you so much for joining us, and we're going to see you again next time. Bye. Bye.